Hello and welcome to From a Basement in Tulsa. I'm Jason Ferguson. Thank you guys so much for listening. This episode features The Fuss. They stopped in at the end of their one month tour here in Tulsa and hung out with me and drank some scotch and told me about their rock and roll songs and their new album called On the Prowl. So please, you know, check it out. Uh, and if you're in Dallas, I'm going to check their website. They're playing the 25th, which is launch day right now. If you're listening to the first day this episode's out, they're playing tonight at Gas Monkey Bar and Grill in Dallas. And then the 6th of December at Club Data and the 12th of December at Three Links, all in Dallas. So if you haven't listened to The Fuss and you're nearby or if you want to take a stupid long road trip, go see him. And, and thanks again, you guys, and The Fuss for stopping here and hanging out. I really had a good time. I really enjoy your songs. Thanks for being creative and cool and, and real. And thank you, listeners, and enjoy this episode. What's up, dudes? What's up, man? Howdy. How, Howdy. how often do you hear a joke about your name? Uh, uh, it's usually confusion, but yeah. Oh, yeah. About every time we run into somebody new. Yeah. yeah. Totally. <clears throat> I assumed. What's the fuss about? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had a nickel. Yeah. You pronounce that fuss or puss? puss. <laughs> you put it in the puss. <laughs> 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 so introduce yourselves, dude, so we can get your voices matched to your names. Now, I'm Josh. What so do you do, Josh? I play guitar and I sing. That's cool, man. Cool. I'm Trey. I play drums. My name is Ace Mulligan. Ace Mulligan. Well, hello, man. Uh, I bet you play the bass. I Mulligan. do play the bass. No, force quit. <laughs> Fired that guy a long time ago. Yeah, as an dude. ass. Ace is such an upgrade. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you guys here from from Dallas. Yeah. 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 And you're on tour, stopping here, which is cool in Tulsa. Yeah. Uh, which is in the last date of the tour, apparently. Yes. Yes. Man, you guys been going for a month or yes. two months or six years? Uh, we've been, <laughs> been we've been together for six years. We've been touring now for a month. Um, so our third tour. This is our third, As fourth tour. Course. Yeah. Fourth. So we're uh, yeah we're just on our way back from our East Coast tour and you know spreading the love of our new album. Yeah, tell me about that. Uh, we just put out a record with Magnetic Eye out of New York, and they're uh, it's called On the Prowl. It's a, just a straight up rock and roll record. Yeah, and it's pretty new released, correct? Yeah, it released on the fourteenth. So we're excited about it. I'm excited for you guys. I, I I think you're the first band I've seen tell a majority of the crowd to fuck off, but still get a cheer from the rest of the crowd. Do you do you know what I'm talking about? I, okay. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> well, I think he says that a lot. Uh, <laughs> it's not new. Uh, I think there were some douchey people in the back of the bar last time I saw you, and they're all watching football or something. And you're like, "Hey, you guys can go fuck yourselves!" And then all of us up front were just oh yeah excited was, uh, about yeah. What was that? It was these guys playing flip cup in the back. And, yeah. And they're all wearing like salmon pants and yeah. pastel. Color the Okie Bros. <laughs> well, there's a there's a point in the set where my filter flies out of there and i try not to talk very much because if i do and my adrenaline's pumping and usually telling somebody to fuck off usually <laughs> telling somebody to fuck off so usually i try not to talk and if i do talk it's to say thank you yeah, but, well, uh, I but yeah i mean motherfucker playing flip cup <laughs> we're trying to play some damn songs up <laughs> yeah, here yeah i'm gonna call him out he's missing, <laughs> missing the show yeah i mean yeah. you guys so that was at yeti and you're playing yeti tonight yes you know, well this will be in the future but yes so Welcome back to Tulsa. I'm glad to have you guys. Thank yes, you. Thank you. Uh, tell, me about, tell me about the tour, man. You've been having fun? Yeah, been having a blast. too much fun. Too much fun. It's like a month-long party, pretty much. Bender. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're all coming home with uh, new vices, I guess. I don't know. That's, <laughs> That's not, not true. true. <laughs> <laughs> no. How many, in every town, has somebody said something about Ebola with you guys being from Dallas? Yes. I, mostly. Pretty damn close. Yeah. Was... Like, it's always been mentioned at least one time. Which is a part of the plan. Like, mm-hmm. when I'm having guests over, I try to think of all the things they're regularly asked and yeah. try not to talk about them like I'm, like it's the first, like I didn't know you get regularly asked that, like Forrest and his name. Like, I'm sure it's every day, every Starbucks cup has a note on it. <laughs> <laughs> Run! <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. He gets that a lot, too. Yeah. About I, once a day. Usually. Well, there's the one for the day. Yeah, that's one. We usually count Thanks for, like, Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I only know that because another friend, Forrest, another friend of mine named Forrest, posted a picture like every damn time, and it was a Starbucks cup that said, run, Forrest, run. And okay. then I saw your name was Forrest. I was like, man, that's got to be the worst. It or is the terrible. Best. Yeah, but the ladies love it. Yeah, I'm sure. You got it yesterday from the dude at the pub. No. Dudes love but, it, too. Probably more than ladies. Well, what Drunken you... idiots love to make <laughs> yeah. Forrest Gump jokes. <laughs> this guy, we were like, introducing ourselves. This dude was walking out of the bar. And he was like, he's like, I'm Forrest. He's like, 
what'd you say? <laughs> he's like, forest. He's like, forest. Like, 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 forest gump. Like, gump. Like, gump. Like, yeah, scratch yeah. that from a record. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Well, tell me about On the Prowl. I'm, I'm excited for you guys. I'm always excited for new music, especially with friends' bands. Sweet. What, what happened with it? What's it about? Um, you know, I had, uh, we had made our record in 2012. Um, it was about to be a year and a half since our recording. So we were like, okay, well, it's time to make a new record. Um, and at the time, uh, our lives were going all kinds of different places because we toured the, the last record really heavily. So it's like when you're coming back from, uh, you know, kind of, you know, we still played shows, but I mean, it was just a little different. You know, we, we all had our own things going like families and stuff going on. And so when we got back together, we all had different experiences and all this stuff. But one of my main things that I wanted to do was write in the studio and for better or for worse, it was really fun. And we got some really cool songs out of it. So I think that's the major difference between everything. This time was a little bit more, you know, coming in there with no idea of what was going to happen and just trying things out and, you know, learning it and recording it almost simultaneously. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So it was fun. I don't know if I'll ever do it again, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine not playing songs for a year before trying to record them because cause I have to have people tell me, hey, this part sucks. Yeah. And then... Yeah, I mean... I guess that's what a, a producer is for. Yeah, we hired a producer. Um, his name's uh, Jeff Sines, and you know he, he works really closely with uh, his own project, but not only that, like he did, like, I found out about him through, like, Reverend Horton Heat, and uh, the Bronx was brought up. That's why he kind of liked us. He plays guitar with them every once in a while. So, like, he kind of understood the whole hard rock kind of garage punk thing that we're going for. So he was interested in doing the project. So when we met up, um, he showed me the studio and it just has a lot of room and it was really cool to like walk into like a real studio. Cause our last album we recorded, it was pretty much a fucking attic. So, you know, <laughs> like you walk up and it was really underwhelming at our last studio. And then I go into this place and it's just some guy that liked my van, invited me over to the studio after we met at a bar once and it was totally random. And I walk in, it's just like 20 foot ceilings, hardwood floors, just Kick ass. <laughs> it was good. Very was cool it? studio. Oh, yeah. What was it? A uh, uh, studio from the seventies that did jingles. Yeah, they did a lot of jingles. Uh, and th like, I think the cool part about that was like there was like an energy in the room for being creative because jingles are kind of like, like if you ever are hanging out with somebody who writes jingles, it's like they pretty much just get the brand name and then they like go over to the piano and just like bust it out real quick. You know? Yeah. And they're like, Stay Farm is there. That's a wrap. Done. You know? <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite songs is uh, You've Got a Friend in Me from Toy Story. Yes. It kind of relates. I love that song a lot. And now I love... Uh, what Randy damn? Newman. Yeah, thank you. Randy Newman. But he was... I, I, I read him talking... Don't want those short people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I was reading about the inspiration of the song. And he's like, well, I got some a note that said he needed a friend. And, and then I wrote You've Got a Friend in Me. And it was just... I yeah. Know, it was kind of... It's really random how stuff like that works. Yeah. And, like, I, that's why I love writing lyrics, too. So, I mean, just, yeah. like, these weird moments where you're going to have to, like, pull over to the side of the road and, like, write this thing. It's a really supernatural kind of feeling. Yeah. Thank God for voice memos. Right. <laughs> yeah, i got to write it down, even a voice memo. Yeah. Because I'll lose it in a voice memo. I'll just... True. Somewhere it'll be in there. Oh, I have to have a voice memo because I normally sing the melody if it's oh, yeah. in my head. And then if, even with a voice memo, it's pretty difficult to come back to it. I'm like, what was I thinking? This is stupid. Yeah. So, so you're probably better writing it down. Yeah. I, I mean, I can't write music, but I, I, I usually hear lyrics. Like, I'll have a melody in my head and I'll whistle it. But if I get lyrics to it, then it it's set in stone. So That's cool. It's kind of how'd, you, how'd you meet this Trey dude? Trey's playing the drums. Mm -hmm. Um, we met a long time ago. Yeah. We've been friends for a really long time. About eight years now. Yeah. So, almost a decade. Oh, speaking of, do you guys know the Raven Charter? Yes. yes. They, they the were Raven here, Charter. man. That's cool. I wish I would have asked about you guys on their podcast. But oh, That's awesome. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. We love those guys. Small world. Super small world. Well, I mean, it's like we're across the street from you guys. Oh, yeah, that's true. Small. Not literally. But You're over a, a bowl of land, so <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty. Right. I like to believe that's pretty far. Yeah. Is, is it? Is it blown hey, watch up? Watch out! Tulsa's a third world country. Yeah, <laughs> right. Is it blown up there? Like, is it a big deal? A bigger deal in Dallas than it is everywhere else? No, the only person that got Ebola has already been cured from it. So 
Oh. I think we're all right. I, I was just picturing a town of freaking out Pandemonium. people. Yeah. No, like Dallas. Days later, <laughs> Dallas doesn't really watch Fox News. All we don't know. Often. We haven't been there. Yeah, in a oh, month. haven't been there in a month. <laughs> no, I, I mean, we. None of this information is true. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I, my lady's my lady's back home, and she says it's not that big of a deal. Um, so, That's good. Um, and I've been reading the news and keeping up with it, but I don't know. It's all right. I mean, if if we come back and it's all zombie apocalypse style, you know, I'll be damned. <laughs> We'll just keep on driving through. Yeah, just keep moving. <laughs> and back to Trey. How'd you come involved with the fuss? Mm. Just kind of happened one day? Well, he was in a, a band at this time, a long time ago. And I was working at Guitar Center. I think I was probably like maybe 18 years old. And then, you know, he, he walked into Guitar Center with a, a dude full with full money. And I was like, all right, you need a drum kit? <laughs> this, this, and this. And uh, so... Initially, we met through a transaction, um, and then that dude, the investor or whatever, uh, Josh's band had broken up. He was like, hey, you should call at that guy Guitar Center. He was like, all right, cool. So we met at a, at a coffee shop, and then uh, from there, we started playing some music and haven't really stopped. Yeah. We've been in a couple of different other bands uh, before the fuss. So that's I say a couple. One other band. That shall not be named. That shall not I, be named. I heard about Can you guys. Can we please name that? <laughs> I forgot what it was. <laughs> um, man, I've, uh, Can we yeah, show it was pictures really, of it too? It was really, it was really awesome. Um, because I had never heard Trey while we were hanging out at this hey, at this cafe. Never even heard me play the drums. Didn't I was just like, had gear. Hey, you're in the band. He just has that guitar center discount. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he just seemed like he knew what he what the fuck he was talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know. I understand. And his name's Trey Alfaro, and that's a cool name. Yeah, he was set up. And Trey went and jammed with Forrest um, in Arlington, which is kind of where we used to hang out. It's kind of like in between Dallas and Fort Worth, and we were just kind of like rats in the middle of it. Um, and Forrest worked at Guitar Center, the same one that Trey worked at. And Trey, we've all been really good friends. There's just a lot of bands that work there. Yeah, I'm sure. So... No, we've all been like kind of inbred in there. So that's kind of like our group of friends. And they went to a jam and I got a call after Trey went and hung out with everybody. And he was like, man, I met this dude named Forrest. And he's like, really fucking killer at bass. You should, we need to get him in the band. I was like, what's his name? And they're like, he's like, Matthew T. Forrest Barton. I was like, <laughs> and it's done. Fuck it. How do you feel about that being the reason you got to join the band? It's terrible. You okay with it? It was a terrible. <laughs> but it worked out. It worked out with Trey because he's a phenomenal drummer, and it worked out really well with Forrest because he's a master of the bass and any stringed instrument. So, yeah. but cool, really cool well. story about Forrest is he's been playing an instrument the least amount of time out of all of us, and he's like better than all. Of us. Yeah, that's <laughs> not true at all. <laughs> it is true. No, he's been. He played trumpet. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm talking about bass guitar. Well, I mean. You played guitar for how long? Have you been playing bass? Uh, be five years now. Yeah, the bus has been a band for or six. So no, it'd have to be. I've been playing for six. Though. Yeah, you've been playing for six. So which is not a long time. No, for for what you do. Yeah, it's fucking retarded. <laughs> <laughs> well, lots of compliments to you yeah, for, I, for being a badass. Guys, I appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> now it's you the must last time. Now say something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the only time they've ever been nice to me. I don't understand what's going on here. Yeah, it's because we're on record. Yeah. <laughs> I heard about you guys probably. I think like full year before I got to see you play. Just a few of my friends were freaking out every time the fuss would come to town, and I was like, "Man, I better go see the fuss." So good for you guys. Is it happening everywhere for you? I feel like. I mean, yeah, it's been really cool because, like, we'll be going into these places that we've never been, and I think, I think the big thing it's not it's not us, it's the the relationships we've made in these other places. That's the big key. Because, yeah. like, you know, you could be Mr. Big Dick and try to go in there and and take everybody's fans, but I mean, like, really, the the biggest thing is like bands in other cities give you exposure every time because i don't live in i don't live in gainesville and i I don't live in new york but going there and and you know researching the band finding them letting them know that you're a human and not just some like fame crazed robot that wants to like steal all your fans you're probably gonna tell most of their fans to fuck off yeah exactly (laughs) i feel like Somebody does that. I do that. No, I do. I, I, it's all in good spirit, though. Yeah, I mean, it's really not an every every time. Thing. <laughs> I, I I only say that when I'm just 
going off. Yeah. You I know. know, which is really fun. Um, sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Lately, I've gotten into this very good Zen feel where it's like I go up on stage, the adrenaline comes up, it's not overwhelming, and then, you know, it comes down afterwards. So it's not just this big train wreck that happens on a microphone every time I talk on there. Alcohol is fun. Yeah. Alcohol is great. <laughs> Alcohol helps. Alcohol uh, definitely helps. I can, I can only normally tell when I've had enough to drink because I'll start cussing at all on stage. I'm like, this next fucking song is pretty sweet. <laughs> this like, oh, and then, like, song is so fucking wicked. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really fucking like this song. Yeah. I, I'll cuss all day in the basement here, but like, yeah. for some reason it's weird to me to cuss on stage. On stage. Uh, but it's getting less and less. I don't mind way. cussing on stage. I don't like, like, there's times where I'll like cuss somebody out because they're being a jackass. But at the end of the day, you know, I'll get back in the van and I'll think about it and I'll be like, oh, such a jacket. <laughs> but like on stage, I'm just like in full devil mode. So I think everybody's a jackass. So I don't know. So I've tried I've tried to get myself in a, in a nice zen area. I really like performing. I love the songs that we're doing. I'm really fine if, you know, five people are watching us or there's, you know, 5,000. I mean, right now I think we're in a really good spot as a team and as musicians where we can kind of control ourselves <laughs> professional yeah i think so i mean i wouldn't no, go i wouldn't go that far true. yeah that's not true <laughs> yeah that's not well true. we're guys... fucking retarded <laughs> <laughs> you guys uh, you guys want to pick a song uh, to play from? yeah what hammer to a nail hammer to a nail yeah hammer to a nail yeah, this is not our single. But okay. We fucking like it. Oh, well, that's that's more important than. Yeah. You want to say something about it or just let it happen? It's yeah, I saw, I saw the I saw the Marked Men at a uh, at a show, and I've always been a big fan of them. So this was kind of like definitely got my garage going again because <laughs> at first, like at the beginning of this album, we were going really fucking heavy and really punk and really stoner and just like everything's on ten. But then I saw Marked Men, I was like, that was fucking awesome and i remembered every song so I, like i really just loved it got my garage rock major chord type stuff moving again and i really love the song and i love forced bass lines and trace just chugging the entire time it's, it's a cool fucking song. sounds cool well hammer and nail by the fuss hammer time hammer time
dude, that sounds awesome, you guys. Thank you. It, it does not sound like it was recorded in a garage, uh, which is what you're saying earlier. No, says, I didn't hey, say it was recorded <laughs> in a garage. I know you're saying yeah. the opposite, but you're like, it's bringing out the garage. It sounds, it sounds good, man. But I Thank really you. like that song, dude. Congrats. Thank you. Congrats to all of you. Thank and you. Then how, how many tracks are on the album you released? Uh, we picked eight. Eight. So That's good. All killer, no filler. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a fan. I think, I think you guys might be got to go out on a limb and probably offend some people saying this, but you're the first band I saw the first time at Yeti and was really impressed. Because sometimes it's difficult in that room with the sound a little bit, especially yeah. when you're bringing on some 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 energy. Do they have electricity? <laughs> I think so. I don't know. We'll play there. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they're... I think they're continuously working on the Yeti room and getting it better. But back then it was like, oh man, this hurts my ears. But you guys, it was not the case. That's Excellent. a that's a first. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right on. Well, usually, that's good. usually it's like, oh, that band's too loud. Yeah, we've cleared out a lot of rooms. Yeah, yeah. cleared out a ton of rooms. I'm, I'm, Pissed <laughs> off many bartenders. Mm-hmm. Uh, the yeah. grotto. I that's I don't, not true. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> None of this information is true. Uh, and and what do you guys call your style? I know it's hard to rock and fucking roll. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And you don't hear, I don't hear a lot of bands like you guys, which is a compliment. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. You guys are, and you're, I don't know, I'm trying not to be too fanboyish, but That's I really right. like your band. I'm glad you guys came to, yeah. to talk. Uh, Thanks for having us. <laughs> We're just enjoying some scotch together. Yeah, man, this is great. Yeah. This, got my uh, the yay here. They, they brought some scotch, which is it's new. actually, it's actually, uh, Peach? The damn pinch. I know, but I had to do Peach. the man boy. Pinch. <laughs> pinch. Pinch. I like it. Yeah, it's just loud, man. It's a good tones, loud tones. And you guys seem to be having fun yes. playing music. Do you have a, a favorite time that you've played a, a show or a favorite moment of a show? It's On been a lot tour? of them. Yeah. Well, On this tour? this tour? Pick the Definitely this tour's fine. Jersey. Jersey? Yes. Yeah. I like New York, too. New York was really fun. New York's fun, but man, Washington D.C. was really cool too. Hanging out with Battery Electric. We hung out with Battery Electric. Okay, Hot so Blood. there's this band. This is our new favorite band. Um, they're not our new favorite band. They've been our favorite band, but they're like brother band. They're they're our brother band. They're like blood to us, and they they're out of uh, Asbury Park, New Jersey, and they're just like generally good dudes, just really man. fucking great people, yeah. but also a great band. Um, and they're gonna be putting out an album soon. And I'm excited about that too. So we should check them out. Yeah, that, who's that? The Battery Electric. Battery Electric. Uh, Asbury Park, New Jersey. I like their name already. That and Hot Blood. I'm, wear, I'm wearing their shirt. Yeah, and I'm wearing a Hot Blood shirt, which is our second favorite band. <laughs> it's actually a tie. It's mostly the same people. <laughs> so Matt Kiley fronts uh, Hot Blood, and those those people. The thing that I think made Jersey so fucking awesome is we played this. Uh, we played a DIY show. Which we did a couple of times on this tour, and it's been really for the better of everything. It's really kept morale up. It's really fucking fun. Sometimes lucrative. Very <laughs> fuck, very fun, and so much better than like the other times we tour, where we always go to like some major city. We play in some stupid venue, and like may it might work out, it might not work out. I don't know. Yeah. But this house party was really cool because it was like, I don't know, loft. It was like a loft party. It was like a loft. Kids showed up. And yeah, I was going to kids for it. I was going to ask about that. I wasn't counting them. This information is not true. I was going to ask if house shows have become more po- or have become more popular for you guys the past couple of years because a lot of people touring through ask me if there's anybody that does house, house shows. shows and I'm like, uh, no, I would do it here, but there's room for three people. Yeah, that's where <laughs> I go back with those relationships. Yeah, like, seriously, um, by making a relationship with the battery electric and being and them being such cool dudes and understanding like what we like and what they like are the same things you know it's like you just find your friends and it's so weird to think that you have a family on the other side of the continent yeah so that's cool but they live in this town they know exactly what's cool they know what their fans like and then they put together this really cool show in jersey and there was like 150 kids shoved into this loft going ape shit <laughs> um new york was really cool because it was the it was the first time, like, we went to New York and we played the show. Yeah. You know, and people were going nuts. There was a ton of them. It was a great time. So, yeah. Yeah, Jersey and New York were really right. Yeah, the last time we played New York was the most CMJ. people we played in front of. No, this very oh, yeah, last yeah, this time. very last time. The yeah. previous time we played New York was for CMJ. We finally figured out how to play rock shows in New York City. Yeah, yeah. totally got this down. Yeah? Yeah. Is it, is Third it, time's a charm. 
It's really fucking Fourth easy. Time. Check this out. <clears throat> I'm listening. You book a show. You put only local bands on it. Maybe some, maybe one other one that's from out of town. You don't play their festival. You take the train, or you, t- you drive your van to Jersey City, park it. Get on the train with only a guitar, pedals. Pedals, cymbals, stick, snare, hi-hat, clutch. Yeah. Get on the train, go straight to your venue, do the damn thing. So much easier than doing the festival and driving the van through the... Through the city, it's just yeah. so crazy. Parking Although that's my favorite. Suck. Parking tickets. Parking totally tickets do suck. suck, but I have fun driving Manhattan. Yes, he does. I wouldn't be able to do it. I don't know. I'd be too scared. No, I'd I have freak fun out. Shit. Hmm. Yeah, my anxiety level is way too high for anything yeah, like that. Yeah, for sure. I would Trey be has road rage. I yeah, needs <laughs> things like New York City. Yeah, isn't that? that? Yeah, New York affirms Trey's bad <laughs> attitude when driving. It's like everybody is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <ya. laughs> I like, uh, especially when I'm not in a hurry, I'll, uh, it's only happened a few times, but I enjoy getting stuck somewhere, like behind a city bus, and then just watching for a few minutes, because it takes a couple minutes for them to offload and load new people on, and just watch people pull up behind me and freak the fuck out, and then swerve in the ne- next lane, causing a wreck. I just love seeing people mm-hmm. like that. It makes my life, it's like, oh man, my life's going pretty good. I'm not getting that pissed off. Yep. But but Trey's that person that's freaking out. Nope. No, no, he doesn't no. freak out. He's just laughing. <laughs> cackling, even. He's like, ah! ah, 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 ah. Just honking excessively for no reason. <laughs> just I'm going around and like... If you see this van on the road and there's a Mexican driving it, stay the fuck away. Because... <laughs> just like gridlock traffic. He loves it. It's at, all at 60 miles an hour. the same speed, but you find a window to go around somebody. It's when you... Yeah. It's when you... I don't know. It's when I have fun. Yeah. <laughs> I work in the automotive industry, so I like. It's gonna be a drag star. Yeah, yeah. I I see Trey posting pictures of VWs, and I like them all. Good. Are you a big old fan of them? Oh yeah. Do you, Do you own a VW van? Yes, I do. Okay. Nineteen seventy two Bay Window Bus. I'm jealous. I almost bought one, but then I had to have a car to drive that day, <laughs> and uh, and like so I went and saw it on Craigslist. I had I was selling my car and I had a certain amount of money, and I had to have a car to drive the next day. And then like I went and saw this beautiful bus, and then he pointed out everything I would have to do for it to run, and then, like he'd only worked on the interior, mm-hmm. so I had to have would have had to like, run all the lights and bind new tires yeah. and do a little bit on the engine, but. But I bet he Daddy's got to get to work cheap. tomorrow. That's <laughs> no, not going to happen. He still wanted more than I had, but yeah. I, at least I got to look at it. And but I have another friend, Jason, who works on VWs, and they look super fun to work on. Um, if you got to work on a car, uh, it looks. I mean, uh, having the engine in the back, where you open the trunk essentially, mm-hmm. and then crawl in with the engine. Uh, yeah, I like it's a, I like. I don't know. It's a, they're fun to work on. I don't know much about it, but I have friends at work that you know help me work on it. Aside from all the fuss stuff, yeah. Volkswagen's like, that's my gig. That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. I like them too because they're air-cooled, and uh-huh. uh, that's all I know about from school. It's mm-hmm. a good time. From aviation school. But we can go back to music. Let's play another song. <laughs> if you, well, I, I just wanted to mention the sweet VW you own oh, yeah. and be jealous of it. Hell yeah. Let's tour in the VW, and we'll put the TP on top. I feel like we'll have a, just a grand old time. Yeah, I'm totally for that. <laughs> we got to go, you guys. <laughs> Let's play Sweet. another song, man. You want to pick another one for us? Would you like to pick a song? Golden Overdrive. Oh, I guess Trey beat me to it. Uh, let's do, uh, let's do like something this. else. What about <laughs> The Prowl? Since it's our... Mm, let's go Straight Line Impala. Yeah, okay. I can do that. Straight Line Impala. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the first track. Track one side one. Yeah, well, say some words about Straight Line Impala. Uh, I was driving incredibly fast. Uh, on my Were you in New York? No, I wasn't. I was I was on my motorcycle, and I had the melody and the first verse. the The first verse is very long, but I got it. Like I wrote it all in my brain. Then I went home and wrote it down, and didn't do anything with it. And then Forrest and I were at the jam spot, and we were trying to. This was when we were first trying to figure out if we were even going to make a new record. And Forrest was like, just pick a number. Shh, shh, don't, don't tell him our secrets. Oh, never mind. That's confident. That is confidential. Never mind. That's not true. Well, <laughs> so at that jam, we made a really fun and odd chord progression. And then I went home and I was trying to think about what was going on with it because it still didn't have a rhythm. It was just a progression. So I went back to that song, wrote the rest of it, and went to that chord progression and added the rhythm to it. And it's just a really fun song. It was one of our more organic songs that we've ever... Well, this entire album's pretty organic. But but yeah, it was, it was really cool to see the song evolve and 
be written. So yeah. I really like cool. this one. Well, cool. Here's Straight Line Impala by The Fuss. What a cool song, dudes. Thanks. I'm glad you enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> we were love it. Funny jokes just a ago. Do what? We were, we were telling funny jokes earlier. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some, of the, some of the best things from the episodes happen while we're not, or like while I'm uploading a song. Yeah. Some, some of the best conversations, some of the best dirt. Yeah. I like to, I'll release it in like. No dirt here. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dudes. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you. I mean, no problem. I'm sure you've been busy a full day of dead gum touring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lots of showering, I, I hope. No. You guys can use it on the way out if you need to, by the nah. way. Shower. <laughs> Thank you. We, we've done plenty of showering. Yeah, we've, we've got the showering down. <laughs> we've got it figured out. Yeah. Uh, Check stops are our friend. When yeah. I went on a short tour, uh, we took camping supplies just in case we wanted to save money on hotels and we're going up the beach in california so it would have been pretty nice but then we chickened out every time we're like no dude i need a shower see i wanted sure. to do that too it but sounds these, these we're in tennessee Fuck that, you just explained though. it you want the shower yeah you want the roof over your head yeah and there's there's a point you where, want somebody else oh, to clean up oh your mess after you after i'm exhausted from a show we played this festival um, down in Nacogdoches or not Nacogdoches what was it New Braunfels and uh, and we played Dia de los oh, Todis yeah. and it was my birthday weekend so it was just an all out party we had a really great time slot it was really fun but instead of getting a cabin we were like let's fucking camp <laughs> you know 
Turns out it's like over a hundred both days. We yeah. play the show. We're all exhausted. I got a s'more in my back pocket that's completely melted. Yeah, it's no good. It was his birthday. We needed to was, give him a present. I, I passed out before midnight. But uh, yeah, we had a really good time. But man, like after a show, you're so exhausted. Like I'd rather sleep in the van than than, set, than sleep outside. Yeah, than setting up all your yeah. stuff. Mm-mm. Yeah, fuck. I'll that. do it. I don't care. I don't know. I'll turn on the barbecue grill. I, I know barbecue Tr- grill's fine. I, I know Trey saw the picture on Instagram, but we went to look at teepees uh, yesterday or something. It doesn't matter time wise because I want to rent one, but they wanted 170, 180 bucks a night, and it was just to sleep mm, in the teepee. And then nope. like, there's no bedding you bring your own bedding they have a chimney you bring your own wood and i'm just like i can get a really sweet hotel for 180 bucks where they yeah, yeah. They how come. much is one of those if you just want to buy a tv I'm, I'm they go from i'm a little bit knowledgeable on this but they go, <laughs> <laughs> trust me i know tp trust me i i would have one if i could afford them they go from like you can get a an okay one just the canvas and buy your own sticks for like 250 for just the canvas but they go up to like 10 and fifteen thousand dollars. but they have some that you could what? you could live in like if you put it, you could run water to it and everything. You could live in them like thirty foot teepees. Wow. That's, that's that's more square space than my house, I think. No, yeah. uh, so that's that's an option in the future. Wow, yeah. we'll move to Bolinas. We California. should all go teepee. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. fuck houses. <laughs> I'm into it for real, yeah. except for except for not in Oklahoma in the winter. Even though you can have a fire inside, which is pretty fantastic. That's nice. Where can we find your stuff on the internet? You can find it uh, pretty much anywhere. It's on Amazon. Um, it's going to so, be distributed. Spotify. Spotify. It's on Spotify. Which is really all three good. of our records are on all Spotify. All three of our records are on Spotify. So, by all means, Magnetic Eye. Magnetic Eye. Bandcamp.com. Yeah. You can order our vinyls that are coming out that are very, 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 very sweet. Yeah, that's cool. I, I think you're the first band I've had over that's actually releasing vinyl because uh, I think your music is the only one that so far that it'll work well. I feel like. I would enjoy listening to your music on vinyl. It's just, pretty rad. Just a dude playing guitar and singing isn't really worth yeah. putting it on vinyl. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have a couple of records that are like that. I mean, it just depends. I yeah. mean, I, I like vinyl records. I'm a collector, which is what made me gravitate towards Magnetic Eye. What they do with vinyls are really, really cool. And they sell them, and they got some good bands on there. So, you know, there's some really cool records to come out from them and from us, so... That's pretty sweet. It's pretty rad. Pretty rad. And is it just thefuss.com? Uh, yes. P-H-U-S-S. That's the that's the perk of spelling uh, your name wrong. <laughs> I'll try to. I'll Nobody try to. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We own everything. <laughs> there was no competition to get them. Nope. There wasn't nope. any for from. There music. wasn't. Now there is. <laughs> now it's like there's a band named Pussy or Fussy. <laughs> oh, no. Which is what we, you know. It's not. It's not right. <laughs> Just they, not. they will get a cease and desist. Yeah, <laughs> that's not for sure. true. And then Instagram. <laughs> all, <that. laughs> all right. I'm so glad you guys took the time to yes. come over. Thank awesome. you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks for having I'll try me. to link everything in the description of the podcast. Right Are you guys on. podcast listeners? Yeah, have we're you? totally. That's what we listen to on the road. That's that's awesome. Do you have any favorites? I um, recently started sharing them. Michael Marr, and we usually try to find conspiracy. Uh, podcasts hell yeah, hell yeah. just because we're stupid and some, it's fun to listen to great ones uh, oh yeah reptoids what, what's the dude's That's name so alex jones man if you can get past the him selling you water that cleans your pineal gland from the fluoride cal- calcifying <laughs> i can't even say it correctly yeah <laughs> but i love hearing those things yeah i, I think uh, david ike is our favorite <laughs> <laughs> awesome well dudes thanks a lot let's pick another song you want to just play the single or yeah yeah uh i don't feel good but i'm having a good time let's do the title track or the title track on the prowl. On the prowl. All right. On the prowl. There you go. What? What's on the prowl about? Is it about being on the prowl? Uh, no, it's actually a fictional story. I kind of had this daydream about, you know, uh, a, a, a punk rock lady, you know, and like I don't know, it's hard to describe. It sounds like I'm on crack. Okay, there's a. <laughs> I was picturing uh, so the sounds- afterlife as a single road, and. Uh, a lady trying to go between heaven and hell, um, trying to get out of out of hell into heaven, and um, you know the chase that that ensues from that. So that's the idea of it. It's kind of retarded, no, but I, I like it. it. Thank you. I, I love it. Cool. I'll say a weird Balls. thing I've been thinking about too. Then uh, balls. I've been, I've been ball. <laughs> balls. Okay. Sweet. Yes, I've been thinking about balls. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about. I've been thinking about. I've been thinking balls. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
right. Thank We're you guys so much. Sorry. The fuss dot com. Yes. Have a good show. Have a good safe trip home. Thank you very much. Thank you guys so much, man. Thank you. And this is on the prowl. Title track off of On the Prowl by the Fuss. There we go.